Let's talk about Apple Developer Conference, WWDC24, and something that they briefly mentioned during the keynote that has to do with Vision Pro that got me super excited. This is Artist Right. We're gonna get numerous new Apple operating system this fall that will incorporate new features, AI, Apple intelligence, and an update Siri. Vision OS 2 for Apple Vision Pro will come with many features, but one of the things that caught my attention was Mac virtual display and the ability to do that now and expand it to a widescreen that will be the equivalent of two 4K displays. I think that when you're using these two devices together in tandem, that's definitely going to improve productivity when you need more power on a Mac. And that's something that I'm definitely looking forward to try out. But one of the things that I shown her in a keynote is a Canon camera with a dual lens system. Then they announced that Canon is developing a camera system that can film in spatial. The following day, Blackmagic have announced their own solution. And this is what we're going to talk about based on the press releases that I've shared right now and some thoughts and questions that I have about it. But before we do all those, let's quickly rewind back and talk about Vision Pro and spatial video. By the way, if you haven't tried out spatial video yet, and if you have the opportunity to get a demo at an Apple store, I highly recommend it because it really is profound. So when I was reviewing Vision Pro, and I got a chance to try that out. I said that in the future, it would not be too much of a stretch to think that there will be creative, instead of just videographers, there'll be spatial videographers or spatial photographers. Well, I think this fall, that day is definitely going to come. The cool thing too about filming in spatial is that you can still show that on a normal screen without needing a Vision Pro per se, but the moment you put it on a Vision Pro, you now have the ability to see everything in three dimension. And this also leads me down the rabbit hole a little bit too, to film one of my friend's wedding in both spatial and VR and learning from Canon that there are differences between these two systems. And the TLDR version is that spatial is really punch in, normal human vision is still in 3D and you can still view that on a 2D screen. But VR is, is really meant to capture everything at 180 degree feel of view, and you can just look around in that environment. That's something that's different between spatial and VR, both of them common thread being 3D, but the fact that they are approaching it in different ways is rather interesting. Spatial makes you focus on the things that you want your viewers to see. And I, I will put the link to the video that I made about that and film my friend wedding in VR and spatial in the description. You definitely should check that out. Currently, there are three devices at the consumer level that can capture spatial. Apple Vision Pro itself, which you strap this on at an event and you try to film something, you look weird really quickly, so I don't recommend that. And there's also the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max. So I was using the iPhone 15 Pro Max to film my friend's wedding and it was really amazing actually. So being that Apple have announced that Canon is developing this system is really cool. And one of my guests that I have right now is that in this fall, what we're gonna see is the entire iPhone lineup can do spatial video with the Pro and the Max version probably being able to do spatial video of 4K because currently with the 15 Pro and the 15 Pro Max, we're limited to spatial at 1080p. And having more, I would say resolution for a spatial video is definitely gonna be something that I want. The ability to also go out and film in spatial in a low light situation too is definitely gonna be something that is gonna be really interesting. And this is where the Canon system comes in. So based on what I'm seeing so far, this lens is gonna be very different than the RF 5.2 millimeter VR lens that I've tried out because that lens also is a manual focusing. So you have to kind of manual focus that lens where this one, the new RF S 7.8 millimeter F4 STM dual lens for EOS R7 is gonna be autofocus. So that's gonna be neat and interesting. The other thing too that I find interesting is that Apple that is that Canon is designing this lens to be incorporated on an EOS R7, which is an APS-C sensor. So a smaller sensor camera, uh, that would be the first thing. Secondly, this sensor is 33 megapixels, which is good, but there are some limitations, meaning that you can only film 4K at the maximum of 60 frames per second, and you can't do anything more than that. So there are certain limitations in this camera. And my guess would be that when they release this lens, we're also going to get a new firmware update on the camera too. So when this announced, I'm probably just gonna get one of these camera and a lens, even though I don't film with a Canon right now, it'll be good just to try this. The other thing too, what I wanna do is see if we can adapt this lens to another camera system and if we can use it and bring it, bring the footage into, for example, Resolve or 
something along those lines and edit that I think will be very interesting. Based on Canon press release so far, the way how I see this is you're going to have to use probably a Canon equivalent of their VR utility to process these videos out because my guess is that this is going to be filmed in a Canon proprietary format very similar to the EOS R5C that I filmed with their 5.2 millimeter fish eye lens and that's coming in out from the camera in a proprietary format. It's not a .mp4 or anything because everything needs to get inverted and flipped and so forth. So it's going to be very interesting to really try this out. Now don't get me wrong, the R7 is going to have the much better capability to capture video in low light than an iPhone. But doing this for an APS-C, I, I mean, are we going to see a solution for a full frame camera? That's something that I'm really curious about, right? Because there is an RF 5.2, but it's not autofocus and it's not really meant to be spatial. The other thing too is that this lens does not look as robust as the RF 5.2 millimeter. Obviously designed for an APS-C, it's probably going to be at a much lower price point so that many more people can really have access to this lens and camera system too. All these things I think are very interesting and it's also going to be I would say fascinating to see too whether Canon is going to just give you the firmware update for free when you purchase the lens or is this going to be a paid firmware update to get access to this feature. That would be another thing. My guess is that the firmware would probably be included and anyone can just download that. But when it comes to processing the file, their VR utility right now, you have to pay a monthly subscription of $10, which is actually not bad at all if you want to ex export a long clip. But I feel like that's really going to be the way. What I want to see though, and what I want to know is whether this file can be brought into, for instance, Final Cut Pro, Resolve, or something to edit, whether this is going to be interoperable or not in the future, that's something that is yet to be seen. And like I said, what happened if I take this lens and incorporate it on another camera body altogether? How will that turn out? If that's going to work or not? All these things we're going to find out, I would say, this fall in the next few months. Now, the other thing that I want to point out that is rather interesting is the fact that Blackmagic has also announced their own camera system. And this is really interesting where Canon leaves, I would say, a lot of room open to develop another lens for it because it's using on the EOS R, their mirrorless system. So these are interchangeable lens camera. So you can really just quickly mount another lens onto there if you want. So this may be one of those future where we have multiple different spatial lens, a different focal length if we want to. But on the Blackmagic system, this is a fixed lens system, but this is really designed much more for pro than the Canon system. What's interesting about this is that this lens is pretty much fixed on the camera itself and they mentioned that each of your eyes will be able to see the equivalent of 8K. Now on a Canon, we're talking about a 4K sensor that's divided into two, so you're getting about like a 2K resolution or so. This is going to produce a higher resolution, number one. Secondly, it's also going to be able to film at 90 frames per second. And that's something that's very, really interesting. Now, what they also say is that this is going to film in a Blackmagic RAW or B-RAW format that you have to use DaVinci Resolve, which will get update to process these files so you can render them out. So I think it's going to be interesting. And regarding for both Canon and Resolve, I wonder if there's going to be a feature where you can export files that has greater compatibility, meaning that if you pop it into Division Pro, you'll have the 3D one. But if you just play it back on an iPhone and a tablet or computer, very similar to when you capture spatial with your phone right now, it's just going to show in a 2D. I don't know if that's going to be the case or not, but it's something that I'm looking forward to see where this is going to go. What they also mentioned though is that this is going to be an 8K equivalent 3D video with 180 degree field of view and I think it may be one of those where it captures super wide and you have to really go in and pick the specific focus where you want things to be. A lot of things are not super clear right now but based on what I'm seeing so far is that if you're using a Blackmagic camera system, you have to edit and resolve. If you're using a Canon system, you have to use Canon software first but you may be able to take that into Final Cut Pro. That's kind of what I'm seeing right now and whether Final Cut Pro is going to get updated to that or if other linear editing software such as Premiere is going to jump in or not. All those are very interesting things, but Blackmagic have marketed their camera totally different. They're billing this as the first commercial camera system that captures spatial video and it says that the sensor can deliver 8,000 megapixel by around 7200 megapixels per eye. So what I like to know is whether they're using two 
8K sensors inside or using just one large sensor and just dividing it. So that would be another thing to really kind of think about. My guess would be that they're using one large sensor on the inside, dividing it between two eyes. But that's also going to be something that's very interesting to see. Now, this camera has a robust connection. It has 12G SDI out, 10 gigabit Ethernet. It has a built-in SSD per se that you can record onto the camera itself. It also has 10 gigabit Ethernet and the built-in one is like eight terabyte high performance network storage built-in. I mean, this is a pretty crazy and robust camera. And my guess would be like this, it's going to be a fairly pricey camera, but I'm gonna try to see if we can do like a press loaner or something like that to get that in to really test out because I'm just really curious how this is gonna work out. But there's a lot of really great features from this camera that can film spatial in a commercial format like this, I think it's going to be great because this is going to be a larger sensor than what we're getting in a Canon. And who knows, Canon in the future may end up developing a spatial video lens for a larger sensor camera. But I think part of the reason why they kept that too was going back to my experience filming in VR using the RF 5.2 millimeter with the R5C using 8K on a camera at 60 frames per second is definitely not easy on the power. You have to plug in extra powers and everything to the camera itself. And I think that may be the reason why Canon is limiting certain capabilities right now to an APS-C sensor that can only capture 4K 60 at the maximum at this moment in time or in the future. Power and technology improvement may change the way how we approach things, but Blackmagic is taking this up from a different approach altogether. Now, what I like to see is, will there be other camera companies or a lens manufacturer that make lenses for the current camera system right now? And will there be more softwares in the future, including linear editing software that just will take a you know compressed H.264, H.265 that may not necessarily be raw and being able to just bring that into the software and export them out in spatial. Final Cut should definitely be the program that will do that. And the other thing that I like to see too is other camera manufacturers jumping into this whole thing because I mean, it's great that Canon's doing this, don't get me wrong, I really just am super excited about this, but I also want Sony, Nikon, Panasonic, other brands to really think about doing something like this too because if this is gonna be the future, I think it's a really cool new feature. now. Whether spatial video is going to have the critical mass and it's going to be one of those features that everybody wants or it's going to be the feature that everybody creates this way because it is also backward compatible with a normal screen is something that we have really yet to be seen. But one of the things that I talk a lot about on my channel and in my creative photography and tech journey too is HDR preview with Lightroom Classic, Adobe Camera Raw, and Lightroom. And the fact that, you know, when you do an HDR preview on an Apple XDR display, it's just profound. Your image just looks totally different. But not that many people know about that feature and not that many people are really using it. So it hasn't really gained critical mass. And what I really want is spatial to really gain critical mass. So we're gonna see where this whole thing is going. But I think this whole thing right now with spatial is super exciting. And I'm glad that there are now more options for tools that we can create with. And now we have the option of a good, a better and the best system that we can go with. And somebody will top that better system or that best system down the road too. So everything is super exciting. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Give this a like, subscribe and hit the bell to renew. I'm Art and I thank you for your time.